is 101.9 High FM. Save 50% or more on specially marked color cosmetics from Revlon, L'Oreal, Rimmel, Yardley, Maybelline, Elme, Palladio, Bionique, and the rest. Now on sale. Plus, stock up with great prices, special offers, and discounts on skin and body care, hair and nails, toiletries, health and fitness. Yep, it's all about bags of value right now. So come get yours at Discam Pharmacist to Care. See you there. I'll walk down memory lane with our very own Jewish encyclopedia. It's Talk of the Town with Isaac Resnick, only on your station, 101.9 by Apple. Welcome, good morning. Well, winter definitely has arrived. We had a little bit of rain yesterday afternoon, and you can feel the difference this morning. But uh, please dress warm. It should get going up to about 18 degrees in Johannesburg. But if you listen to the news earlier, uh, then you will see that in Israel... The temperatures are soaring. Uh, I spoke to my nephew. He's in Ariel. He says it's 38 degrees there. In Jerusalem, it'll be 34 degrees. So we really uh, would like to exchange weather if we could. Now, this morning, I have in the studio my very, very good friend who just got off the plane a couple of hours ago. He's going to give us an update, and that's Les Glassman. Welcome. Good morning, Les. Isaac, thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Craig, it's good to see you again. And welcome to all our listeners out there. Thank you. Now, as usual, I just start off with those, unfortunately, who passed away during the week. And there was Leah Schenka, Mandy Jaffe, Bernard Kloss, Rhoda Scher, Jess Silman, and Israel Udaken. I didn't get today's update yet, um, so I'll have to announce that on a Friday. Just want to wish the respective families Chaim Toivim Marukim a long and a good life and may they have no further sorrow. So now Les, um, let's start with you, give us an update. You've just got off the plane, what's happening in Israel and then we'll continue with your various visits where you went to Finland, etc. Okay, well, while I was in um, Addis en route to, um, from Tel Aviv to Joburg, um, I spent uh, a day and a half in Addis and uh, I got the latest New York Times, and on the front page of the New York Times, it had a, it's quite a leading article, Feminist versus the Jewish State. And it's about what we heard in the news, about uh, the controversy at the Kotel. So I was very fortunate, Duff, it was a week ago, on Tuesday last week, that B'nai B'rit International hosted, um, uh, the keynote speaker was David M. Friedman. He's the American ambassador to Israel. And uh, when he started his speech, he said, the M, what, everyone asked him, what does M stand for? So M is actually Melech. And uh, he said, I'm not a king, but I was named after my, my aunt, Malka. Now, what was incredible about um, uh, Ambassador David Friedman is that he had a prepared speech. It was a policy speech, his maiden policy uh, talk that he was going to give. There was the international media that were there present from the different uh, TV stations and the world press, because here you were having the American ambassador giving his, uh, his opening remarks and his opening speech, his very first speech in Israel. And he said to the crowd, uh, he told us that he, he had a very good speech prepared. He said he has very good speech writers, and he checked it, and, but he said he's going to change it. He said he wants to speak about something different. He wants to speak from the heart. And he spoke about unity. It was incredible. He mentioned to us that um, that he never thought in his lifetime that he'd ever wake up and he'd hear that there are other Jews that are saying that they had to rethink their support of Israel. Now, we know uh, he was politically correct. He didn't mention which group had mentioned this, but a leader of a very substantial group actually did make that statement, which is it's pretty strong and it's pretty hurtful. Um, thinking that um, one has to rethink, God forbid, one's uh, commitment and one's support for Israel, which is a state for all Jews. And definitely, you know, with unity, we have to have a compromise. And the Kotel is the symbol of unity. But uh, what was a really wonderful in David Friedman's, in his speech that he gave from the heart, he actually quoted Rashi. It was incredible. He gave a, it was like giving a little Dvar Torah, and he really spoke, it was beautiful. And he mentioned how he said our wars. He included himself in, in Israel's wars. 
He said, the three boys that were kidnapped. He said, our boys. And, you know, the, the audience, they really connected very, very well with him. It was, it, was, it was watching something quite unique, thinking that here is the American ambassador to Israel, so pro and so in touch with what's going on in the state. And his, his main focus of his talk was that I'm Israel Chai, that we need unity. And I just want to mention that, um, you know, I thought about it. In Judaism, if you think, Devorah, Hashem chose Devorah to lead Am Yisrael. That was in the biblical times. And there hasn't been yet in the States a woman president. But we had a woman leader of Am Yisrael going back thousands of years. Um, the Kotel is open 24-7 for everybody. Anybody can go at any time, and uh, it's open to everyone. And I was there with um, a good friend of mine. He's a, the only religious Indonesian, uh, from Indonesian, for our listeners and our, uh, our viewers out there, uh, from Indonesian. I interviewed him at 2.30 in the morning at the Kotel. You, it's a, a wonderful time to go. You hear the birds tweeting. Parking's pretty, <laughs> it was very easy to find parking where during the day it's virtually impossible. And it was a wonderful, we had an interview, I did it actually at the Kotel, it was very special. But anybody can go to the Kotel at any time. And um, three Shabbos ago, we had um, a group of birthright that came to us for lunch in Bayt Vagan. At the same time, I had two very special guests. Um, our, view, our listeners out there, I'm sure, know the, the very, um, how can I say, it's a very special family, the Marathi family that have uh, my guide. It's a, a black family that uh, the parents and their son, Victor, is now called Menachem. He's 19 years old, and he made uh, he came to Israel, and he's learning at Machon Meir. And together with uh, Yosef Chaim, a Nigerian who decided he wants to be Jewish, he went to Cape Town, and he, through the base in Cape Town, he Magaid, in where they came to us for, for the meal. And there we were with the birthright group that, unfortunately, didn't know much about uh, Kiddush or Benching or, or even to read Hebrew. And, um, and there we were all uh, interacting with each other. And I asked the birthright group, I said, out of your experience in Israel, and they've been to many places in Israel, very interesting and wonderful places, I said, what was the highlight of your trip? And you know what? And we've had a few birthright groups, quite a few over the years. And I'd say over 90%, and especially this group that came to us three weeks ago, without hesitation, they said, Friday night at the Kotel. That was the highlight of their trip. We're just going to take a break for a few moments, and we'll be coming straight back. <coughs> Israel has had a, a, a woman leader, Golda Meir, sure, sure, sure. but not president, but coming up. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Is when people say feminism against uh, the Jew state, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Discover why the rich gets richer. Success Resources is proud to present the National Achievers Congress 2017. Featuring best-selling author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, live in South Africa. But the reason a lot of people are not rich, I think mistakes make you stupid. You don't mind if I mention all this. It's interesting. You'll see this is also something very, very sad about this girl who was killed. Did you see what the BBC said, bro? NACSouthAfrica.com He's called the Walking Human Encyclopedia, but here at Chai FM, you know him as Isaac Resnick. For a nostalgic walk down memory lane, catch Isaac Resnick Friday mornings at 9 a.m. And for the lowdown in the community, be sure to stay tuned for Talk of the Town, Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. What's going on in the community? Let's find out with Isaac Resnick. Welcome back. We just tuned in and we have in the studio my very, very close friend and guest, Les Glassman, who just arrived this morning from Israel and is giving us an update. So please continue, Les. So the, the article in the New York Times was entitled Feminist versus the Jewish State. And Isaac, as you mentioned, Golda Meir was the Prime Minister of Israel. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit misleading because in reality, um, I think Israel is a place where it accepts everybody. A compromise will be found for the Kotel and must be found. Everybody must feel comfortable. It's a place of unity. And I think what was really wonderful for me to experience when they had, uh, we just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem, of the 67 miraculous war. 
Uh, it was the night before Donald Trump came, so the city was like in lockdown. But they also had a wonderful light show on the walls of Yerushalayim with the Prime Minister and they had many artists. That same night, we had the reunion. Uh, it was a reunion. Rabbi Tenza was in Israel. And the Yeshiva College organized a reunion for Rabbi Tenza. Now, it wasn't easy getting to the old city and the buses didn't go and you couldn't get parking. And But people did come and... Um, you know, we'd give all the cupboard for Rabbi Tenza. I would go anywhere to see Rabbi Tenza. He spoke in my bar mitzvah. He actually even reminded me. It's incredible. He has such a memory. I think what they mentioned in, in, in the talk, one of the most outstanding features is that everybody who went to Yeshiva College has a Kesha, has a connection with Rabbi Tenza. And we, are, we so appreciate uh, when Rabbi Tenza and his wife came to Glen Hazel. They're the only Shomer Shabbat family in Glen Hazel at the time. It was, uh, and they, what they built up, it was remarkable. So this was the um, dinner that we had, and we videoed it, and you can get it on YouTube. It's, uh, you just go to Les Glassman Yeshiva College, and you can see the speeches. It was a wonderful, wonderful reunion. The next day, when, um, when, when um, President uh, Trump was there, his daughter, Ivanka, actually went to the Kotel, and she cried. She actually tears came when she was doubling at the Kotel. And it was the first time in the history that a sitting American president actually was at the Kotel. What was quite interesting, a few weeks before, from the State Department, they said that the Kotel doesn't belong to us. So the Kotel, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very important, I mean, it's the, the Harabait, that area is, is the heart of Judaism. That's where everything, that's the most important and holiest place on earth. And um, we have to have it as a unifying factor. It has to be for Am Yisrael, and compromises will be sought, but everybody must support Israel, and we will make a compromise. There's no question about it. I think what's also amazing in Jerusalem, and Isaac, uh, it's, you know, Israel is a place where there's something on the go every day. Um, only a few days ago, the area, the uh, municipality of Jerusalem, uh, near Bakat is the mayor, uh, I might just say that my daughter actually uh, is connected and works with Nia Bakat. But what happened is that um, they organized a light, a spectacular light and sound show in the old city. And it's in the old city, in the Jewish quarter, and in the Muslim and Christian quarter. And as you come in from, um, from Mamilla, they had a youth orchestra, combined Christian, Jewish, Muslim youth orchestra. And then they had singers. It was such a wonderful thing to see. They had a Jewish singer singing an Israeli song. Then the next singer was a, a Arab singer singing a Muslim song. And the audience applauded both equally. And this went on for quite a while. And then you'd go to the... They had different stations where you'd see different acts, different performers. It's something really, really, really... It's beautiful. And every year it's different. It's spectacular. So for all our listeners out there, when you're in, in Israel, I really recommend you uh, to come to Jerusalem and to experience the spectacular sound and light show that they have. Um, I went right through and I left out of uh, Damascus Gate. And unfortunately, a few weeks before that, and this isn't such a, a happy story, um, there was a 23-year-old uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Major, Hadas Malka, and um, she, was, she was actually murdered by three terrorists. And um, it was a tragedy beyond belief. What was even, I think, extremely upsetting is that the BBC, in their uh, reporting on that incident, they said that um, three Palestinians were killed after deadly stabbing in Jerusalem. That's how they reported it. And Donald Trump's son, uh, Donald Jr., he responded on Twitter, and he has millions of followers on his Twitter, and he sarcastically said, you meant after they stabbed a female Israeli police officer to death, right? This is as close as to being misleading as possible. After BBC saw that millions of people had seen um, Donald Trump Jr.'s Twitter, they actually apologized and they changed the, the headline, which was on social media and in, in print as well. But the damage was done. And people think that, wow, the Israeli police just go ahead and, uh, you know, just killed uh, three Terrorist. innocent people. But basically they killed an innocent 23-year-old. And to think she's one year younger than my youngest daughter, it, was, it really affected the whole nation. So, um, you know, how do, we, how do we cope with this? So a week later, two weeks later, we had um, this light, light, spectacular light and music show 
where there's a unity, where you have Jewish, Christian, Muslim enjoying this beautiful, spectacular music and, and this wonderful light performance where everybody is included. And I think that's the way to go, to show that we won't be defeated and the light show did go on and, um, and we just have to pray for, for Shalom. We all pray for peace and, uh, and, um, and I just encourage people to show that we will not be defeated and to come to Jerusalem and there's so much going on there. This, it's, it's very special. You know, Les, the, the problem today is the social media they completely misrepresent. They give out false information, not only uh, all throughout the world now. Now, did you see Donald Trump? He's now actually questioning like CNN and all these uh, uh, news uh, people that the material they're putting out is false. Well, this BBC, um, you know, it, it came, the damage was done. Once people read it, they, they, they think, what is this all doing? Just killing three innocent um, Arabs, where it was actually the, the opposite. The opposite way around. They were terrorists. They had, they stabbed her first and told her. shot. It was with automatic weapons. Yes, correct. So, um, but you know what, Isaac? We, we have to be positive and we have to move on. And I think what, what the Jerusalem municipality did and what the, the city does, that we, we have to enjoy life. We have to rejoice. We, we have to be so grateful. Here we have 50 years of the reunification of Jerusalem. It, it's it's a miracle. We, we are witnessing a miracle in our time. Right. By the way, we've, I, I forgot to mention today, of course, is the 4th of July, the American Independence Day. So we should be, wish all our American uh, citizens and all those in South Africa a happy Independence Day. So now, Les, tell us about your recent visits now you've been to. I know you've been to Finland. And okay, give so us some other information. on a very positive note. So it was a... Um, a great honor and a privilege, really, to be appointed to be the Israeli commissioner to Finland. It was held in a city called uh, Tampare. Uh, that's about 40 minutes away by air from uh, Helsinki. And just before I left, I felt I'd, uh, I really wanted to buy postcards to show that there were 43 different countries participating. So we have first their covers of Israeli stamps, but I wanted to give them a postcard of Jerusalem as well. And in the Midrachov, that's downtown Jerusalem, um, I went into one of these, there's many tourist shops, but I actually found one where I saw there were quite a few very nice looking postcards of Jerusalem. And I went inside and uh, I needed to buy quite a few. And there was a, um, a lady there who was also buying some goods. And when she spoke to the owner of the shop, her accent was very unfamiliar. So I mentioned to her, do you mind if I ask where, you, where, where do you come from? And she said, with pleasure, she said, I actually come from Finland. So I said, oh, that's interesting. Oh, we're, we're in Finland. And she said, Tampari. So the chances of me meeting somebody uh, before going to Tampari, one I'd, I'd never met somebody from Tampari before. Anyway, so we had coffee together. I actually asked if I can just video her. And she actually speaks Hebrew. She's a non-Jew coming from Finland. She's been to Israel 30 times. Her name's Ruth. It's, it was spectacular. I mean, the chances of that happening was amazing. When I went to Tampari, I was in touch with her. And not only that, was what I found very, very fascinating is wherever I go, I always wear my yarmulke. Even now, being in Addis Ababa, where I walked around, a lot of people came up to me and said, Shalom, Israel. And they were genuinely happy to see that I come from Israel. And um, it, it, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. But especially in Finland, what happened there is um, I walked in the city and they've got a beautiful tower where you have a panoramic view of, of the city. And um, while I was walking there, so many people, because maybe they'd never seen somebody wearing a yarmulke before, there was once a Jewish community, a very small Jewish community, but it closed down in the 80s. So unfortunately, there's no, nothing Jewish there in the town anymore. In Helsinki, there's still about one and a half thousand and one and a half thousand Jews, and the shul still exists. But um, walking around in Tampari, people came up to me and they said, "We love Israel. We've been to Israel." And um, I actually went. There was a music festival, and I, I actually went to hear a bit of the music. And there's an expert on the piano, and he came up to me. His name's Penny. He's actually going to be coming to visit me uh, when I get back to to Israel. And groups that we had met at the exhibition and around the city uh, really befriended me. And they have a tremendous love for, for Israel and the Jewish people. You know, you mentioned Helsinki. On my Art of the Counter program on a Sunday, I have a cousin 
who's from Israel, who's now the cousin in Helsinki, in that shul, in that shul there. It's a beautiful shul. It's, it's beautiful over a hundred years old shul. And actually, I've got a recording of him as well, and I have played him. And Ozzy, he has a picture of the shul. It really is a magnificent yeah, shul. Beautiful shul. I, um, I yes. was there a, a year ago with my wife uh, before we went on the on the uh, Hugh Reichlin when he took uh, as the scholar in residence the Lithuania tour. Correct. So we spent uh, a morning in Helsinki and we went for a visit to the shul. Yes. And uh, it's a beautiful shul, it really is. And they have a, even a kosher little deli there. Uh, it, it really, it, it is a beautiful shul. We were talking a little bit earlier about um, false information that's been put out and Donald Trump said something about it. There's a text here that says, a lot of time it is Donald Trump who's putting out the false news. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a two-edged sword. You know, we'll never know who's the right and who's wrong. And unfortunately, you're having that in South Africa as well. A lot of information is coming out as false. A lot of information is true. But the, 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 the reporting is not exactly what it should be. But I was going to positive note, I'll tell you, in, in the, um, it was called Finland, Finlandia. It, it actually commemorated the 100 years of Finland's independence. And what was really, really nice to see is, as stems no, bound, no boundaries, the, in the philatelic world, everybody, there was a, a there was such a, a friendship between the different countries. And, I mean, I spoke with the, the commissioner from Turkey. His wife was actually lived in Israel because her father was the military attaché to Israel at one time. So she knew a bit of Hebrew, and she lived in Herzliya Pituach. Um, the Egyptian judge, I actually met a wonderful fellow, and we had a photograph together. And um, there's a very close connection between all the different countries. And it was just so nice to see people actually can get on from different countries with different cultures, different religions, especially in the stamp world. It, it's a unique environment, I think, where I was first accepted extremely well with my Um I was very lucky that I brought that the philatelists in Israel entrusted me with their collections. There was one collection that I brought it was worth way over one million dollars. So it was a tremendous responsibility because um, it stops with me. If something goes wrong, I'm to blame. You, you but I had to be very careful handling it and taking it. But thank God it all went well. And that collection, together with, we, we had five exhibits and we received three golds and two large vermales and a special prize, which was wonderful. And the person who won the Grand Prix is Joseph Hachmi. He's an Israeli. He didn't exhibit under Israel, but he won the Grand Prix. That's like the, the top award from the, that exhibition. And just being there and participating, they had, they really put it a wonderful exhibition for us. They, they had gala events where they had symphony orchestras and they had youth orchestras. And they really, they gave, you know, they, they did everything they could. They spent 10 years preparing for this exhibition. Right. We're taking an ad break. We'll be back there after. From <coughs> from Johannesburg to Israel, from sport to Drop something on the floor. Oh, yes, I'm going to show you. He's called a walking human encyclopedia, but here at Chayafat, you know him as Isaac Resnick. For a nostalgic walk down memory lane, catch Isaac Resnick Friday mornings at 9 a.m. And for the lowdown in the community, be sure to stay tuned for Talk of the Town, Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. Hi, Jane. I overheard my hubby talking to yours about an unsuccessful job. Oh, are you sure you're using the right road to router? Hmm? There are people pretending to be Rotor Rooter, so make sure you have the right name Just and number. If it's not 011 44040, it's not the real Rotor Rooter. Thanks, Ali. I'll remind him that there is only one Rotor Rooter. So when our drain or plumbing is being naughty, there's only one 011 444040. Rotor Rooter. You're listening to Talk of the Town um, with Isaac oh, Resnick on 101.9. Hi, up. 74 years ago, an organization started that cared for the sick while they are in hospital. The same organization also sent children from difficult circumstances on an annual holiday camp, the only holiday they would have. The organization is Bikocholim, and you can join them every Wednesday at 9 a.m. 
for Bikul Cholim connections. You won't regret it. You know, talking about Bikul Cholim, I used to be involved with the Bikul Cholim in the, in the late 70s and 80s, and a very, very uh, wonderful organization. We used to go to all the hospitals. I just want to mention, like, for example, there was the, remember the Kensington Clinic, and down the road was the Marymount Maternity Hospital, and we used to go and hand out chocolates, and we used to hand out magazines, and when I used to go to the children's hospital, give out comics, it was an absolutely wonderful organization. I remember the chairman was Mr. Israelite, there was a Mr. Gishon involved, and um, we used to visit, for example, the Princess Nursing Home as well, the Lady Dudley, and there was the Florence Nightingale. So I, I, I really I ask all our listeners, please support the Pico Khalil. Back to you, Les, now, a little bit more about Finland. What, what kosher facilities did you have, at, or did you spend a Shabbat there as well? So what was interesting on the Shabbos, I did spend a Shabbos there. Um, it doesn't get dark in the summer. Uh, I walked to the tower on the first night that I was there because there was events planned for every evening, so it was the only real time that we could have free to do our own thing. And it took me quite a while walking to the tower, and I thought I got there at about eight, and I thought for sure it will be closed eight at night, but it was open. It was open till like eleven thirty, and at eleven thirty, when they had the sun set, it was still pretty light. So Shabbos comes in very, very late, and it goes out, uh, <laughs> you can imagine. Um, so we had a, a group, on our group, we had an uh, Israeli judge, Eli Webb and his wife, and Yigal uh, Netanel and his wife, and I had a friend of mine as well, Yoram, and we lit Shabbos candles at about 10.30 at night, that's when Shabbos comes in. And, um, you know, with Kashrut, I bought things from, from, from Israel, and um, I had nuts, and, you know, you, uh, food, and you, there's fruit, and, you know, I could get by. It was a week, and it was fine, and my wife prepared certain like, meals for me, and uh, you, you can get ready-made soup, so that wasn't really a problem. And, um, but I must tell you, Isaac, about Finland. I wrote an article in the Times of Israel, and I entitled it, Israeli Philatelists on Top of the World in Finland. Because we did pretty well there with our awards, three gold getting medals. three golds and two large females. But the truth is that Finland is actually located on top of the world. It's really at the, at the top. Um, with its deep green forest, it has magnificent forests. And here's just a, a picture of the beautiful forests, um, rolling hills and glittering lakes, spectacular lakes. It's just, it's a country that's really blessed with incredible nature. But it's been, ranked, it's been ranked as the most stable country in the world. I didn't know that before I left. And it has the best quality life in the EU. So people in Finland are pretty happy. When you walk around, um, they're very fortunate they haven't been involved in, in wars for the last hundred years since, since they got their independence. Um, although they did, um, you know, but they haven't had serious any conflict. And it's a very peaceful country. And... Um, I wish Israel could have that same peaceful and peace God be well. But uh, the people, you can see, are very content and uh, very welcoming. They were extremely welcoming. And um, it was just so nice to see now the Palmares, that's the award ceremony. Being a commissioner, I had to attend. And that Palmares ceremony was on Motzei Shabbat and was actually quite far away from the hotel. So people said, why don't you go on the, on the bus? No one will see but, you know, wearing a, a kippah, it has a bit of a responsibility, and I, I would never go on the bus. So I walked with my friend Yoram, and it was quite a far walk, about a 40-minute walk, but it was a beautiful walk. And um, I was able to attend, and it was really, really lovely. They put on a wonderful show, and um, it was just, it was so nice to be there. Here's a picture of the actual uh, venue where we had. This is in Tampari, magnificent, and they have pictures of the commissioner, and the judges, also at one of the events, we had the mayor's office and we had the um, people from the government attending. There was television crews from, um, from all over Finland reporting. It was in the front pages of the newspaper. They really advertised and it was extremely well attended. This stamp exhibition that they had worked 10 years for, um, it was extremely, extremely, it was nice to see, extremely well attended by the public. Um, and it was just such a great honor and a privilege to have been the commissioner and to have been there and um, to have brought back uh, 
our, our lovely medals that everybody was happy with. Another very nice thing that happened at that exhibition is people from different countries tend to give out gifts, whether it be first aid covers or stamps from different countries. And I'm very close with the Portuguese commissioner and um, the Portuguese Philatelic Society. And this year, Israel and Portugal had issued a joint stamp. It's a beautiful stamp. It's uh, 40 years of friendship between the two countries. And it's, a, uh, it's with a dolphin. And it's about the, um, the, not only the years of friendship, but the cooperation that they're doing on many scientific fields, especially uh, maritime, um, with the seas and with, uh, you know, but being a Mediterranean country. So they brought out this magnificent stamp so my Portuguese friends, because they really are friends, and I've met them in Lisbon with my wife, very hospitable. They actually brought me their first day cover, and I've sent them the with the stamp. The Israeli from, first day. There's one which says from Portugal. It's got the Portuguese flag and the Israeli flag, and from Portugal, and it's it's it goes for uh, it's less than a euro that stamp, and in Israel it goes for seven shekels, and it's from Israel. So you see both stamps. One from Portugal and one from from Israel. So that was really nice. The Portuguese also gave me a beautiful um, Portuguese stamp, which is from a manuscript, an old manuscript um, that, uh, you know, the rich Jewish culture that was in, in Portugal. So they actually issued a stamp of a, a very rare Jewish manuscript. And it was really nice. And then also that I got from, from Belarus, Belarus issued a stamp about the Shoah, and they gave a, they gave me a first day cover with a stamp about the Shoah, uh, very special indeed, and um, they were very happy with the postcards that I gave, and the I gave them a stamp with a celebrating Jerusalem with a first day. It was a miniature sheet on a first day cover, so the camaraderie and the friendship that was shown between all the commissioners and the judges. It's, it's a very special feeling. You know, as you've mentioned before, and you've mentioned it many times, it's amazing how stamps unite everybody, it's, come together. There's no barriers. It crosses barriers. oceans and seas. And there are no barriers. And seas. There, there are no, no barriers. barriers. I mean, you've been to the uh, uh, Philippines, you've been to... to no, it's to Indonesia. Indonesia, and, um, sorry, yes. So, for our listeners out there, with the South African passport, I've been also very fortunate, because Indonesia is a, a country that you... Presently, if you've got an Israeli passport, it's extremely difficult to enter. Um, so because I can use a dual Israeli-South African passport, so my wife and I were fortunate to go to Jakarta four years ago. And um, next month, well in August, in August, the beginning of August, there's going to be an international exhibition in Bandung, that's West Java, and I'm going to be representing Israel there. And what's fascinating with this exhibition, this is just the uh, Bulletin of Bandung. Um, it's the third biggest city in Indonesia, with over two and a half million people. Uh, I've had correspondence from the organizers. And um, we're going to be having five exhibits again. But one of the exhibits is going to be Israel, the Road to Jerusalem. The very first stamp depicting the winding. It's, a, it's an iconic stamp, the winding with the winding road leading, and you see the um, David Citadel, yes. the magnificent stamp. A very good friend of mine, Shlomo Stern, it's his one frame collection. Beautiful with essays, original proofs, artists' uh, signatures and artists' drawings of that stamp. It's unique, so they accepted that. And then we also have another collection on the, the Independence War, the Israeli 1948 Independence War, which is going to be shown in the largest Muslim country in the world. But I think the cherry on the top, the most incredible thing that I never thought would actually happen, we submitted for the literature class. They also have, not only do they do you exhibit stamps and people come in, they, they look at the stamps, it's exhibited on frames. They also have a literature class where people who write books on stamps, it's also entered into competition. So um, they asked Israel if we could uh, send an entry. And the Israeli Philatelic Federation brought out, that it's, it's new, this is hot of the press, this is the latest, uh, they brought out Migilat Esther. It's a Migilat Esther with stamps depicting the story of, of Esther, Esther, Queen Esther, and adjoining the story, they have 
relevant stamps, which really it coincides with, with the story. It's just been printed, and Isaac, when I come, hopefully uh, in six months' time, in December, I'll be giving you a copy of that book. It's all in Hebrew, and I submitted it on behalf of the Israeli Philatelic Federation. I sent it registered. They received it, and they said, with pleasure. And that's going to be in the literature section, a book in Hebrew. It's a religious book in Hebrew, uh, in Bandung, in the largest Muslim country, country in, the world. in the world. And they very gladly accepted our entry. So it's going to be really quite fascinating um, seeing a Hebrew religious book in Bandung in Indonesia next month. Right. Taking an ad break. We'll be back soon. The best part of your day. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. All the music. All the music. Hi, it's Ernie. Here is my radio show. We're for the Sorry, and the moment for a not appropriate for a radio show. Rubbish. Tell them they let us get onto YouTube. That's why we make good radio for you. And flavors and varieties to please you. We're for the old use and the young use. What is it on your your YouTube is one? Yeah, then they can see the this. Times. Yeah. And we're there during the easy times. We're for the Ashkenazim and the Sephardim, for the Bubas and the Zaydas, for the Imas and the Abbas, for the leaders and for the followers. And if there was an international day celebrating the life we live, we'd be for that too. At High FM, we're for life. We're for you. The Dummies Guide to Streaming High FM on the Internet. Step 1. Visit www.highfm.com. Step 2. Click Listen Live. Step 3. Select the player you installed on your PC. Step 4. Hi, Greg. High FM all day long. Hello, I'm Dennis Prager. Join me on 101.9 High FM Sunday very, very to special. Thursday night. Well, I've got a few things for you. I'm going to give you a list. Right here. I'll mention it. On 101.9 High FM. I'll walk down now. I should actually mention With our very own Jewish encyclopedia, it's Talk of the Town with Isaac Resnick, only on your station, 101.9 High FM. And welcome back. We've got a text show said... You know, um, I, can't, I can't have a radio show and see this picture. Sorry, not appropriate, but you can see what I'm talking about with Les Glassman because as we are talking, we are videoing this whole program. So you get onto Les's uh, YouTube, he'll give the details now. It's just Les Glassman, L E S, and then uh, a separate word, Glassman, G L A W S M A N, on YouTube. You can actually see the David Friedman's, his. Uh, his speech that he gave a week ago, his very first speech that he gave in Israel, I was very fortunate to video it. Um, the one is just audio, and the other one, uh, if it's on a phone, you need earphones because the sound is very, very high quality, or you can see it on your computer. So one's in real-time video, and the other one's on audio. And there's a lot of videos, uh, quite a lot of videos that I, I hope our listeners will find interesting well, to And see. today's show, you can also see, as we are talking to you now, is being videoed. So it's not that I'm uh, that you won't be able to see. I should have mentioned this earlier. But so what's nice, Isaac, uh, I'll just mention those people that I mentioned about in Finland that came up to me. Uh, I asked them, do you mind if I video you? Because uh, and just that you relate your stories to to people out there, and they were so willing. So you can also go into YouTube and you can see the people that are speaking about their um, their reactions, how they they love Israel and the Jewish people. I uh, managed to video them. In fact. Uh, a week after the Finland, I came back, Erev Shavuot, a week later, four people that I'd met, met in Tampari, and uh, one is actually a gypsy, interestingly enough, a gypsy, her family has been in Finland gypsies for 600 years, she has a tremendous love for Israel, she wears a gold mug and David, the Star of David, and she doesn't know English, but Finnish, but four um, friends of mine that I had made, from Tampari told me that they're coming to Jerusalem and they actually came to our home. Right, you know, just as an aside, the gypsies were also massacred by the Nazis in yeah, Maximo during true. the uh, Holocaust, the Second World War. And you know, the gypsies did support the Jewish community. I have a wonderful recording of a gypsy orchestra playing my Yiddish Mama. That's right, now if anybody would like a copy of that, I could email it to you. It's a video. It's magnificent. 
So, my address is isaacrez at yebo.co.za or isaac at chai.co.za and I will gladly send you a video of this gypsy orchestra playing my Yiddish mama. 100 violins. Now, I'm going to put out a question quickly. We've still got about 10 minutes to go. What is the Yiddish word for gypsy? Let's see if any of our listeners know. What is the Yiddish word for gypsy? So, and also just remind you, you can get onto Les Glassman on YouTube. It's L-E-S at L-E-S G-L-A-S-S-M-A-N. Two separate words. Two separate words. And you'll be able to see today's program. You'll be able to look up when you uh, was with uh, David Friedman. So please don't feel we... we uh, also, also the, you. Um, that Finland exhibition, Finlandia, um, one can see the orchestra. You can see the the um, youth orchestra playing and the symphony orchestra playing. I uh, videoed those events with permission, and it's really beautiful to see. It, they're very talented, and it was really nice to see that as well. One of the nicest things that uh, for me, uh, one of the, it's like uh, it was very very special, were the gifts that we give, and we really do try and give each other as many gifts as possible because of the friendship that we have. So I managed to receive from Austria the most incredible thing that I'd never seen. And I've been collecting stamps since I was the age of six. So now Austria have come out with a um, very unusual and remarkable stamps because they want to encourage the youth to collect. And they've done some novel ideas. So here's a stamp, and I think our viewers, if they're going to be watching the YouTube, they can see it. It's done in cloth. So there's a stamp, Isaac, I'll send to you in cloth. Then there's there's... With gold plated, it's very beautiful. Um, there's actually gold plated on the stamp as well, magnificent. And they have one in leather even, and it's it's a proper stamp where you put it on a letter and it gets cancelled. Then they have one with uh, semi precious jewels. The problem with that is, I think anyone who gets it in the post would want to take off the jewels. But you know what? They they do sell it and it is used. Then they have a ceramic stamp as well. So I asked, how do you cancel this? So they said that they do do it. There's a special way. They have a special cancellation that actually cancels it. But it's a ceramic stamp. For our viewers, you can see it's make. It really is magnificent. Right. I just wanted to... We do have a text here. I asked the... What is the Yiddish word for um, gypsy? And I've got a reply here from my very close school friend, Julia Schneid. And the word is Sagaina. That oh. is a gypsy at Sagaina. So, as I said earlier, if anybody wants a copy of that magnificent... Uh, orchestra, gypsy orchestra, all violins, 101, 101 violins playing my Yiddish mama. Text Isaac at chai.co.za and I will email rather and I will email it to you. Now, Isaac, I have a special gift for you. Um, Israel came out on the, on the special occasion, on the miraculous occasion of the 50 years of reunification of Jerusalem with a first aid cover which has a miniature sheet. And it has Hebrew University on Mount Scopus, as well as the Santiago Calatrava String Bridge. And anybody who's been in Jerusalem recently, they've actually at night, it's lit up. And it's actually stunning. It's really, really magnificent. It's really beautiful. You see the String Bridge with lights, and it's, it's just so beautiful to see that. As well as a stamp of the Kotel um, before the state was declared. So the Kotel is very, as we started our show today, the Kotel is central to, to Jewish life, to, to Israel. It's the heart of the Jewish people. And um, they brought out this miniature sheet, and it's cancelled with the 50 years um, reunification, a gold cancellation, because Yerushalayim shall have Jerusalem of gold. So Isaac, this is a gift to you. It's a magnificent first day cover. I hope you enjoy it. And um, thank you very much. Oh, this is magnificent. It really is beautiful. And beautiful. Jerusalem is, is central to all of us. And um, the message of Yerushalayim shall Zahav, it is very special. For me, I would have, you know, being in Finland, I was actually there for Yom Yerushalayim. And um, Mizrahi and uh, Rav Doran Peretz, uh, people will remember from here, from Yeshiva College and from Mizrahi Shul. They organized a spectacular event at Binyanah Ma with uh, a chief rabbi, with rabbi Mer, chief rabbi Mervis, Shveki, uh, the three paratroopers, that iconic picture of the three paratroopers at the Kotal when it was liberated, 
they were there. Um, I couldn't be there on that, uh, that, that evening because I was flying to Finland. But in Finland, uh, we, we also celebrated Yerushalayim. In fact, every day is a celebration that we have Yerushalayim. Right. So, uh, unfortunately, time has run out. I want to thank Liz once again for coming in. It's been the most wonderful, wonderful show. I think thank you. And, and thanks, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you, listeners. Thank you. Just to remind you, on Friday morning, we have the reflections of the past between 9 and 10. And then on Sunday, we have the Art of the Canter between 4 and 5 p.m. To thank Craig for controlling. To go well to all our listeners. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Please dress warm. Uh, winter's upon us. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Go well. And thank you for listening. Very good. Thank you. I hope it was good. I think this is the top feed. We can discuss this is amazing for you. I just want to clear you a few other things here. This was the um can you see what kind of Yeah. Yeah, really they nice. all went. There was Ronnie Kaplan yeah. there and a whole lot of this is a nice little bit too. But it's nice. I hope it was uh, was it okay? Excellent. You see, no, the guy's right, you said you said we're seeing this but he but now he can get on. I just want to take his number so that I can phone him so I can call. So what do you do? You go 